G'day, I'm Bruce, and in this video, I'm going to try and start this dozer that's been left in the bush for years. From what I can make out, it says Fiat Alice on here, so it's probably about the size of a D6 Caterpillar, probably a D6D or something like that, I'd imagine, maybe even a bit bigger. Six cylinder engine. I'm not sure, I don't think it's turbocharged, but it's a pretty fair lump of an engine. Looks like it's been sitting here for a fair while. Looks like a fair hunk of rust sitting there. He must have been sitting here for a long time. You look at all those big flakes of rust there. Sitting on the stick rake. It's got something written on there, made by Hooper. Hooper at Montville. Must have built the stick rake. They always made very good equipment. Let's hope all the snakes and everything have moved on when we drove up here, but we've had to travel miles to get to this dozer and driving across the paddock here to find this dozer. We nearly got bogged a few times, but lucky we're in the Old Nissan Patrol. Uh, it was a 4.2 litre turbo motor and it was able to scratch its way through. We we're bumping around the place, but we finally got here. I'm going to have a good look around to see if there are any wasps under here anywhere, it would be an ideal place for a big wasp nest. So far so good. <laughs> There's a rat's nest in there, it's full of leaves. Obviously that's the throttle. That must be the shuttle shift. And that still works. Looks like it's got about 7,482 hours which is probably not a real lot for something like this, but of course that could be, that could be 17,000 hours, 17,500 hours, we really don't know. You look in here, you can see the rat's nest in here. Look at all the leaves and... So I'd say there's been a rat around here, and of course that's the danger if there's rats, there's probably snakes. Got a set of rippers on the back. Bit of rust on the rams here that probably should be cleaned off. Yeah, it's an idea they had on some dozers where the, where the rippers could swivel on the back. Some dozers had it, some didn't. I guess it probably made them a bit easier to turn with that setup. When they had the rippers down and they went to turn, I suppose they might just turn a bit easier. Yeah, when you look across the console, looking down towards the blade, it'd have to be at least a D6 size, possibly even D7. I suppose it just depends which model D6s and which D7s we're comparing against. Um, yeah, it's just a pretty fair lump of an engine. Don't really like the look at these hoses here. They look like they could blow very easily, especially that one there. But I'll see if I can get that dipstick out and see if it's got any oil in it. Yep, we've got oil. There's the maximum mark, so that's looking pretty good. Pretty dark in colour, but plenty in there. Gonna try and get it back in there now. There we go. That's got it. It's been sitting here that long. There's like moss all over the side of the motor. A lot of these old dozers they have batteries underneath the seats. So I just hope there's not a big brown snake sitting under here. Maybe that's got to come out. I'm not sure. I 
don't think the battery's going there because there's no leads. Looks like a hydraulic suction line at the back and or whatever. It does have 24 volt written on here, 24 volt. Oh, the little bottles and same thing, no battery leads there. <coughs> There's a bit of a trap door here, there's another compartment underneath, further down. You can see some hinges down here, so... Aha, uh -huh, there we are. A couple of whopping big old batteries. Look at them resting in there. It's going to make it difficult for us too, because our batteries have got the, the posts one either end. These got these big batteries with posts on one end. Now we've got the posts on the one on each end. I guess we're going to have to get them out of there. Yep, we'll be able to undo them and um, try and put our batteries in there and see if we can rig something up. Fuel tank over here. Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to get it. smell too bad. Obviously it's got a little valve in here. I suppose it could still get a bit of water in it. If the rain blows in on a bit of an angle it could still hit that. Look at this for rats. Look at all the, all the rat manure. So wherever there's rats, there's snakes, so danger. Most of these old jiggers, they'll have some sort of a floor plate with a hinge on it, caterpillar included, where you lift this up, and they'll probably be somewhere underneath there to check the transmission oil. Low, very low, down to here on the stick. Yeah, so it's going to definitely need some more transmission oil putting in it. I don't think that even does up, but... Next up will be check the radiator, which should be underneath that plate. No water in sight, but I guess we'll put some water in there and see if it holds water. Exhaust pipe up through the ceiling. The exhaust pipe is actually pointing forward and it's been cut off on an angle so water can't get down the exhaust, so that's a really good idea. We've got a pretty good overview of the whole machine now, so first up we'll see if we can get those old batteries out and get our batteries in there see if we can make it turn over. If we can see that it's going to turn over and do something, then we'll go along and we'll top up the radio and top up the transmission oil. So if it does start and run, well, those sort of things aren't running dry.
it somewhere. This one's a quarter wet worth. And the only thing besides shift is it'll fit it. It's quarter wet worth. Nine sixteenths, no good. Thirteen mils, no good. battery. Right, there's the second battery. Broken handle and all. I was alright with the first one, second one but broken handle, had to get the cameraman to help me lift it out. And the other one, oh yeah. Now some good batteries. One of the things we thought last night to bring was some spray for the wasps because there's quite a few wasps starting to build around where I live and I thought well if they're there they're probably out in the bush just as well. well we haven't encountered any yet but we won't speak too soon. I'll just show you how you clean these terminals. I've shown it in nearly every other video. Just get that little brush that's hiding in there and just go like that and hopefully clean them up. And then if you have um, old batteries with dirty posts, you put that in on the battery and screw that around. So we might even use our jumper cable in case the other one's gone corrode inside there and we can't see it. Sometimes those sort of things aren't very obvious and you can cause a lot of trouble. I've got some of this electronic cleaning solvent. Give that a bit of a go. Doesn't look too bad. Pretty small positive wire. You'd think they'd have something heavier than that. Right now we've got our positive came from that corner. Looks like they're long enough they can go anywhere. room here.
Negative. I'm just going to have a little jumper cable in there. Right. It's marked on there positive. Positive and negative. Oops. She just kicked in, so I don't know what's going on here. Right, I'll tighten them up a bit. They've just got a light on the dash, come on. It looks like that's still working. There's a switch over here. So I'll just turn that off. There's always a bit of a danger with 24 volt systems that they just don't blow the post straight off the battery so they've got to be making good contact one time I had a boat with a 3208 caterpillar in it 24 volt and everything looked pretty good but it must have had a dirty terminal being a boat I suppose salt water in the bilge and I tried to start it and it just went poof it just got one just got one post on the battery, just blew it to bits. So that's the sort of thing that can happen. Yep, definitely tight enough. Right, that shouldn't touch, I hope. Is right. I can hardly wait. Push a few buttons and see if anything's going to come back to life. I've got a start switch here, which obviously probably powers the alternator or generator, whatever it's got on it. This looks like the start button here. With these, with this setup, it's got a decelerator here, but I'm tipping. That when it gets to about there, it's shut down from there. I think that's, I think that's idle. I think that's full throttle. Because when you have them in full throttle, the whole idea of a decelerator is you push that down. That'll bring it back to an idle. So I think I'm pretty safe with all that. So I might just have a look at the injector pump and see if there's another lever on the side of the injector pump in case we can't stop it off those levers there. You can see that rod on the side. That would be in full power. Around about there would be idle, and I, and I think, think that's shut down. So that's probably idle there, and that's probably shut down there, I would say. So there's not much else we can do about that. It's all hooked up, so all we can do is give it a try. And if you look at these sort of things, old engines, whatever, it's always a good idea to work out what it takes to stop them before you try and start them, in case they run away or in case the, in case the stopper lever's seized or whatever. So. It's always a good idea just to check that throttle and try and figure everything out how this thing's going to be shut down. Right over, we've got our light on. Push the button. I'd say the starter isn't engaging because it's been sitting for that long. I'll give it a couple of taps. We might be engaged now. I'll just. I'll just set that where I think idle is. You can hear it's slightly down in compression on one cylinder. That could be just from sitting because when all motors sit, four stroke motors will say, there's always a valve or two open that are held open all the time. And they will stay open unless the motor's got hydraulic lifters. If it's got hydraulic lifters over a period of time, they'll all work their way shut probably. So we'll open the throttle up a little bit and just see if that helps. Yep, 
Here it just changed note a bit when it's idling. It's you know, just that little bit. That one that's you know, that bit quicker one. That's the one that's down in compression. But once it starts and runs for a bit, 15, 20 minutes, it might come back right again. Next move is I think we'll put some diesel on the tank because you just don't know. Somebody may have come here and sucked all the diesel out of the tank. Nothing surer. We've been here for an hour or two and look at that. Rain is starting to come down. I did a community post a while back on my channel and it sounds like people all across the world were having the same problem with too much rain. It'd be hot and sunny one minute and next thing it'd be raining the next and kept changing around. Somebody's broken in here before, that's the thing that's supposed to go around and work with that lock. See if I can get a, a decent footing. We'll just see if there's anything in here. I can hear something. Don't really know where the bottom is. Well, going by that, it looks like it should have plenty of diesel in it. I'll just drop that down the side. I guess the tank's going to go to about there. I'll say the tank's about that deep, roughly. I'm not sure, not sh I'm not sure what shape bottom of the tank's got, but... Yeah, it looks like it's got a fair bit of diesel in it. Maybe we should put a bit of fuel doctor in it or whatever we've got. We've got some diesel power here today. We're not being sponsored by any of these different companies. So we'll give it a dash of that. Rightio, and we'll get 10 litres of fresh diesel and pour it on top there. This way we know it's got some diesel in it, but it looks like it's got a fair bit of diesel in it really. But I've smelt worse, so if we put a bit of fresh stuff in there and a bit of that treatment, it might liven the old diesel up a bit, and that way if it does start and run, it should get better and better, because it'll no doubt it'll have stale fuel in the filters and the lines and the injector pump. on the thread. I think of the next person that might have to undo it. Put a bit on top there too, that might stop the... might shed the water away from that little split pin. Put the diesel on there. Rightio, yeah, another job done. We're nearly ready to give it a bit of aero start, I reckon. If I can get off of here. It's time to top up the radiator. We'll, we'll see how much it takes. If I can get the cap off. I had it off before. Righto, I'm going to put the water in the radiator now. You must be sitting here for a long time. She's going to drink 10 litres of water. Just look out there, just look at that rain. Power on. Arrow start.
just going to see if I can bleed that injector pump. Maybe at 10. That's what it is. Looks like it's got diesel there. <coughs> right, we're going to do this pump. Hope it still works. Doesn't feel great. Loosen that off a bit more. It looks like it's got diesel in. Has got one the other end too. I'll undo it as well. It's a pair of them. I can feel it pumps. Feels like it's sucking air. Bit of air coming out there now. Actually, you'd think the tank, maybe the tank is, well, if it was on level ground, the tank might, might be a little bit higher. Right, I'll tighten this one off first. Then we'll do this one up here. I'll actually screw that down. Sometimes you can't push the pump back down on some of them. If you... Right, we know we've got fuel there. I won't over tighten them because the next person might only have a screwdriver. Always think of the next person. I'll just undo that injector line a bit to give it a bit more of a chance. So, one out of six undone. That might be enough to help get it through. Switch on. We're in full throttle mode. Arrow start. She's actually running. How good is that? After all these years of sitting. <laughs> so you never know, do you? I'm just going to put some more water in the radiator. And then we might even put some more oil in the transmission. And see if it will actually do anything. We'll have to try the hydraulics. We'll stand back when we try the hydraulics. Because some of those hydraulic lines going to the blade, they might just blow out. So we don't want to be standing too close to them. going to describe how the, de the decelerator works. It's exactly the opposite to an ex accelerator. The way bulldozers work, if you have the throttle opened up and you're working, you push that down, that'll bring it back to, an, back to a slow speed so you can change from forward to reverse. And then when you let your foot off this, you rev up again. It's called a decelerator. You change from forward to reverse, and then you let your foot off again. It'll shut down. That's the shutdown mode. A lot of the old caterpillars be the other way. Depending whether they're a loader, like our old loader, you have to reach down and actually grab the throttle on it and pull it back. Yank it back on the old cats to slow them down. I'll just check. I've put three lots of water in it now. I can still see it inside. 
Yeah, it looks like it's full. Always a good idea to go back and re go down a little bit more. Might be able to get it, squeeze a bit more in there. A lot of these old things don't have header tanks or recycle tanks, or everybody calls them something different. So once the water heats up and expands and overflows out, it goes straight on the ground. Whereas a later model idea, it goes into like a recovery bottle. As the motor cools down, the water shrinks, sucks the water back out the header tank, back up into the radiator, which was a big step forward when they did that. I'm just having a feel of this ram. I think that's already a scratch with a chrome. Yeah, there's another scratch there. I haven't got my oil stain or whatever today, so I'll just run this over that. It's only a pretty worn out file. It's actually meant to be a gasket scraper on the end there. I don't think I'm going to do too much. Give it a little bit of rubber to paper. It's already leaking on the bottom side there, so I guess that's good in one way. You've got oil, so you haven't got rust. So I'll just feel them on top because there's oil on the bottom. That feels pretty good. I'll go around the other side, have a look at the other one. Yeah, see, so here we are. We've got a couple of bits of junk there. We might just see if we can scrape them off. We've got a helicopter going overhead, which is pretty rare. Well, it's a pretty bad scar there. That's the worst one there. I don't know whether I can do any good with that. With a worn out file. I suppose if it's making a noise, it must be doing something. Yeah, yeah, might have taken a little bit off it. I often wonder how things like this happen. It nearly looks like it's been burnt with 24 volts, but I can't see how it could have been. Bit of a rub. It's very quiet out here in the middle of nowhere, apart from that helicopter going over. Rightio, we'll go around to the back of the machine now and have a look at the, the rams on the rippers. If I can get out of here. Yep, we've got a couple of couple of marks on here. Yep, it's amazing the difference it makes. Just a bit of a scrape like that. There's another one. What else have we got? Same thing. A bit of oily underneath, which has probably probably saved them a bit. Another one just there. Right, we'll do the file trick next. I don't think we'll damage the chrome too much. Where's the other one? There? No, here. That one, maybe something there. Yeah, that's where I started. If it won't move and it stays out in the bush, probably should have some grease wiped on them, ready for the next person to come along. And the other problem is, I suppose, it would cost that much for someone to come here with a truck and a low loader float. If it didn't drive and then have to winch it on, there's a fairly steep hill to get here too, so. I don't know how they'd got on about that. They certainly wouldn't want to come anywhere near the place in wet weather. A few times this morning we thought we were in big trouble. Let the old Nissan pull through. Now, something there too. 
You wouldn't think it'd be anything there that close to the oil, but we ha have had a lot of rain. Well, we had a really big flood in 13, another big flood in 11. Right, hey, onto the, the last one. Something on the side there. Hardest place to get at. Might be just dirt. Something there. Any little one. Just hear it. It's not sticking up anyway. Looking pretty good. There's that much dirt on the bottom side. Maybe I should get a piece of rag and wipe underneath them. And we've got to find the hydraulic tank somewhere too. Actually, I wonder whether that's diesel. I can see a join there. That's hydraulic oil there, I reckon. This will be the next challenge. I reckon, see this join down here? Look at that, someone's even cut a porthole in there at one stage to clean it out. I reckon um, diesel that side, and I reckon hydraulic oil this side. I guess that's probably the filler bung, and I don't know how we're gonna get that out. Because I don't think I'd have anything here that would if we had a big bolt, we could put the head of the bolt in there, put one nut on the other end of the bolt, put another nut on, lock the two nuts together, go on the underneath nut, we've got the bolt on here upside down, remember, get on the underneath nut and you'd probably get that undone. Either that or it's got to be a giant Allen key, which is probably, probably 25 mil, at a guess. Where am I? Not much to stand on back here. Yeah, that looks like that's the only. Obviously, they've got these here. They're either inspection ports. They may have a filter on the return. A lot of machinery don't have spin on filters on the pressure side. The moment it leaves the pump on a lot of this machinery, it'll be probably at least 2,500 psi, maybe 3,000, maybe higher, depending on what sort of machine it is. So just imagine if they had a spin on oil filter, like an oil filter on an engine on a car, and you force down on the blade or something and it gets a 3,000 pound, it just blow that filter to pieces. So the way they get around that, you've got the hydraulic pump and it'll be sucking oil out of here. And it'll go up, it'll go through the hydraulic pump, it'll come back, it'll go through the valve bank. After the valve bank, valve bank it'll go through the rippers and on the return, as it comes back on the return, it'll, it'll be filtered. These could be filters, I don't know. That's the way excavators work. The filter is always on the return. Usually in the tank, a bit different setup to that. Normally it'll have a pipe or something on an excavator. Normally it's on the top, on the flat. Take these plates off and they're usually a filter. If you've got a 20 tonner, 20 tonne excavator, it might have two filters that long, probably about that round. The other thing they do too, they filter from the inside out, which is generally back to front to the way filters generally work. The next move is to wipe these rams off. If the seals are really bad, that dirt can come back. Some of that dirt might get back into the into the system. So if we wipe that clean, I know it's going to expose it more to the elements, but hopefully we can get it to lift the blade. Right oh, we'll move around to the other side and get a bit of dirt. One time one of my truck driving friends, Peter, said to me, been truck driving all of his life, only just retired, and he said that he was told if there's oil leaking out of an engine there can possibly be dirt going in where the oil is leaking. I thought well I've never really thought about that. I suppose in some circumstances it might be right but I've just never really. Most times you probably always think there's more pressure on the inside than the outside so that can't happen but 
yeah as time goes by different people say different things and that's the way you learn be a good listener or you ask the sometimes you ask the dumb questions if my friend Shane was here now he'd be in his glory back to bulldozer days Shane and I had a lot of fun so it's moving gear Shane's retired now too you think about years ago with your friends and what they did and what you did and sometimes you did things together working on cars or machinery and I think most people had a good time most people had fun I reckon I did I reckon it was a fun thing to do muck around with cars or machinery I consider myself lucky right it's ready to We'll put some oil in the transmission now. Um, looks like it's a fair way down, so I don't know whether we're going to have enough, but that's the thing. We still don't know. Was this machine working here? All of a sudden the tranny started slipping. Who knows? It could have slipped that badly. That might have, might have burned all the clutches out in the transmission. Maybe that's why they just thought, right, we'll just back her in here and park her quickly. It's one of those things that might have just ran out of oil, and all of a sudden it was moving one second and couldn't move the next. Really don't know. Pipe set up. Pipe's gone hard. Right out. Gotta watch out I don't knock the dirt in. These things they have a spring and a ball bearing, but they never really work that well. Because the ball bearing's only metal on metal. And it doesn't want to seal that good. Right here, uh, will it stay there? I'm gonna have to put my foot over here. we go in with the oil well there we've got the most out of that But the max is probably probably going to be still pretty low when it's running, I suspect. But it might be good enough to make it do something. I knew it would take a fair bit of oil. Um, we won't really know whether the, the next move we'll have to get it going again. And then we'll see if we can lift the blade or the rippers. Because the hydraulics looks like all the rams are leaking. So if there's not enough oil in the hydraulic tank we probably wouldn't be able to go too far anyway with the rippers down, the blade down. So the next move then, we, we might have to get a screwdriver or, and a hammer. It's a bit of a butcher's job, but we might have to try and tap that bung to see if we can get it undone on the hydraulic tank. Pump some oil into there, then we can lift the blade and the rippers. Then we might be able to see if she wants to move and do something. The cameraman's looking at those hoses with the rubber perished off them and bare rusty braided steel around the hose and he's thinking well I don't want to get too close to that if I go to lift the blade and all of a sudden there's a big squirt of oil come flying out well he wants to be standing about 50 foot away he reckons when I go to lift the blade or the rippers which is probably not a bad idea there's always that danger there and I suppose I probably should go one step further and probably should put some eye protection on as well back where I am here now by the time by the time the oil got from there to me I don't think it would actually hurt me but I don't want to be I don't want to be out in the bush with oil all through my eyes whereas if I have eye protection on well it's probably a good thing you can see on that ram on the blade there one hose has been replaced but the other one hasn't same on the other side they've only done one
<laughs> she looks like she was trying to go. I thought I'd just see if the transmission would do anything, but yeah, that's obviously reverses back and close. Um, yeah, so must be enough oil in the transmission, but it looks like there's no oil in the hydraulic tank. So we'll have to try and get that bung out of that hydraulic tank and put some oil in there. It might really, if it does a bolt, then we'll, <laughs> it, won't be, it won't be digging a big hole. A little bit of spray around this thing. I haven't really got the right, haven't really got the right spanner for this, but it is going into oil. Put a bit around the outside there. I'll probably stand no chance after being out in the bush. I hate doing this sort of thing, but. I think I might give it a little bit of heat. I don't think it can do any harm because I guess it's rusted from the outside in. So if I just heat up, I don't want to melt that rubber. Somebody else has had a go at it there once before. So I'll go and get the gas. Don't really want to get it too hot. Just get a toe hold in there somewhere. <laughs> it's a butcher's way of doing business, but yeah, what is that? I don't know whether it'll have a dipstick on the end or not. A pretty fair vacuum. I don't think there's anything. Lightest little drop on the end of the dipstick there, I reckon. Yep, see is MT. Yep. Oh well, we'll get our hydraulic oil. We're getting a worn track here. It's like some of these jobs get there early in the morning, by the time it gets lunchtime or whatever, you've got a bit of a worn path around the machinery. It can be long grass, can be a bit of bush. Um, as long as the snakes and that have moved on, uh, we don't mind too much about the rest of it. When I was young, and the kids next door on the chicken farm, they had 40,000 chickens, so they were big time. Had a 35 or 36 Chev cut into a ute. That's a horse fly. I had the 34 willies, so they're all old bombs. Anyway, different people used to tell us, their fathers weren't mechanics, they were more farmers. Different people used to tell us things, oh you should do this to your old bomb, why don't you do that, give that a go, that'll work. So anyway, he said you want to clean her out. We said what do you do, how do you do that? And he said well just give her an oil change. And he said, instead of putting normal old car oil in, put tractor oil in, put diesel oil in. That'll, that'll really clean her out. That'll desludge her. Well, you thought, oh yeah, oh well. Sounds like a good idea. Drops the oil out. Gets his father's diesel oil and puts in. They were busy feeding chickens before school, after school. This is high school, always feeding chickens. But anyway, in between chicken sheds and when they were finished, they'd be burning around, be 
We'll burn around these old bombs. That was the saying. We'll go for a burn. Yep. So anyway, after about a week, the old chef starts to smoke. Then the old chef's really smoking. We thought, boy, what's happened? And that's what happened. That diesel oil got in, cleaned all the carbon out behind the rings. Everything was really worn. And then, as the saying used to go, she's smoking like a dragon. Next thing, starting to oil the plugs up. His father had a few old Chev trucks. So he decided, oh well, we'll stick a bigger motor in. We'll get a 1942 Chev truck motor and put in. So I was allowed to go over to their place and we pulled this engine apart, put new rings in it. And he had gaskets out there where any kids going to high school. Put this motor in this old Chev. Had, uh, before he put the, the head on, he had it shaved about I don't know, 60 thou or whatever it was. And boy, she went pretty hard after that, the old Chev. She could spin them in second on the dirt. So yeah, that was just another little story to tell. Another fun time we had. We'll turn this around a bit. This will be barely enough oil. And it's no good having these drums sitting there with, a, with two inches of oil in them. We'll pump the lot in. Make it worthwhile. Starting to get a large collection of drums at home. A lot of empties. <laughs> That's about as much as I'm going to get out, I reckon. Now, while I'm at it, I don't know if there's any drops on here. I'm going to put some on that shred and on that seal. Remember, think of the next, the next joker. Little bit around up there too, a little bit on the thread. Righty, oh, that can sit back in there temporarily until I get this here put away. It's funny how it goes. There are birds here, but they sound different to the birds at my place. So I guess birds are sort of territorial, even though we're still in southeast Queensland. I suppose different birds live in different places. I've got the creek at my place, so I suppose that straight away I've got different sorts of birds living there. This goes to show the amount of stuff you've got to have to do some of these simple jobs. And when you leave home, you've got to think the jobs through. You've got to think, what will I need? What's the procedure? Where am I going to start? And I suppose after you do a few and you leave a few things at home you think oh gee we better not forget that again um yeah so we're right for another start might i be ready for another start so i'll give it full throttle it seems to have i don't know it has low fuel pressure or the fuel pressure if that is a fuel pressure drops off very quickly i think we're going to need aero start to kick it off
we've got it going backwards and forwards and the hydraulic tank was still a bit low so we put another 20 litres of oil in the hydraulic tank so we hope that'll make it so we can lift the back rippers off the ground a bit more and uh, we're going to try and see if we can drive the thing at least up on top of that hill if everything's going to plan we might even drive it further back to the people's shed and it would be nice to see it go undercover so I've got my ear protection here now to, to try and stave off a bit of uh, industrial deafness so we'll get back on with the arrow start and see if we can get her going There's a bit of an old bone jar, but most of those sort of machines are when they're on tracks. Well, we've been travelling for about, I don't know, for a fair while. We've probably come about a kilometre now on the old Fiat Alice. 
And we're just going past this other farm shed and I can see this other beauty sitting in here. We're just going to have a quick look at it now. Watch out for wasps and snakes and looks like pigs have been here. Yeah, well, that's what I'd call a man-sized dozer. D8H, probably about 36 tonne I'd reckon. She's a big hunk of metal. Yep, she's a big hunk of metal. Well, maybe someday we'll have to come in and have a crack at the D8H and see whether it'll go. Look at the size of those rippers. Wouldn't it have to take some horsepower to pull them right down to, right down to here? There's already the foot in the ground, so we'll have a quick look around the front of her. Whopping big spider there. How's that for spider? Don't really want him walking over my face. <laughs> this one's got what they call a semi-U blade. If you're going to push dirt a long way, probably stops the, the dirt from flowing around the edges quite as much. The dirt will still go around the edges, but probably not quite as much. Yeah, she's certainly a man-sized a man-sized bulldozer. This one. Well, we might have to, I might have to get back on the old Fiat Alice and keep motoring, keep going probably for another K or so before I get to where where, where they want it to go to. But uh, if you want to see me come and have a crack, see if I can get this one going. Leave a bit of a comment below, and we might come back and see if we can get this one to start. Bit of old canvas up there. Batteries are long gone. Sprockets are pretty worn. Look at that, it's even got the blade plow underneath the back of it there. Look at that. Whew. More spiders and cobwebs and stick rake here. Harrows here. Now it looks like there's wet there. We've got to really watch where we're putting our feet here. Take our time. Give the snakes a bit of time to get away if they're here. I reckon they probably felt the ground shaking and the old Fiat was going along there and they probably hopefully moved on.
it's finally back in the shed. I reckon I've probably driven it about four kilometres or more. And as you can see, we've been uphill and down dale. We've been across creek crossings and places where the, the blade could hardly fit between one side and the other, but it just scraped in. The brakes are very, very touchy, very touchy. Just There's nothing, you touch the pedal and the next thing it'll just skid the whole machine around. So really needs a bit more work to free all that up. Starter motor, the Bendix on the starter motor is probably not great too. Once it seems to get warm, warmed up, you've got to keep clicking the button until you get it engaged onto the flywheel and then you, once you get it engaged on the flywheel it's right to go then. These farmers can now work out what they're going to do with this thing, whether they're going to fix up the, the rams, the rams got, you know, obviously they're leaking, fix the rams up, maybe a bit of work on the starter motor. Then they've got to work out whether they're going to keep the thing and work it or whether they might put it on the market and sell it. Yeah, so it's been a pretty big adventure to get this thing going like that in one day and put oil in most compartments except the engine and then actually drive the thing about 4Ks and manoeuvre it around and get it back under cover now. So it's been quite an adventure. I've quite enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy watching the video as much as I've enjoyed driving it. That'll be it for this video. So until next time, thanks very much for watching.